Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're going to continue our discussion on how to create a guessing game. The thing we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to keep track of all of the guesses that the person has to guess, and then at the end, we're going to basically spit them out and say, hey, here are the numbers you guessed. Basically a way to keep track of the progress through the game. Now, before you get started, do check out our sponsor, Embarcadero's Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Now when it comes to storing these guesses, you could store in any type of collection. The choice for this video is going to be an array. Later on, we'll talk about how to do this with vectors as well as templatized arrays. But for now, we're just going to use the basic array, and that should work just fine. So first thing, how is the structure of the code? Well, we have this play game method, which if I collapse this, you can just consider that is the game functionality. When you first run the application, the person has the option to select zero to quit the game, basically return from the application, or they can press one to play the game, and that will uh, that'll jump up here to this function here. So this is where the actual game is, and you can go back and watch the video on how to create all this, but basically, when we run the application, here's what's going to happen. You play the game, and it's going to get a random number, and I'm outputting it here just so we can see it, but in the actual thing, you wouldn't want to output it to the screen there. And then as you guess numbers, it's going to say if it's too low or if it's too high, and eventually you'll get the number just right. So that's how the game works, and you can exit using zero. There you go. So now let's talk about how to create this array. At the very top, we're going to initialize the array. This is going to be an integer array. And the size for this thing needs to be at least 250. Now we do keep track of what the guess value is right here inside of this guess variable, but what we don't keep track of is the number of the guess, basically how many times it took them to get the guess. So in order to do that, what we're gonna do is we're going to create a guess count and this is going to be used as the index to insert data into the array. So we're going to start this at zero, since it's a zero-based data structure. Arrays start at zero. Now we're going to insert data into this array every time we make a guess. So after we put a guess, what we're going to do is we're going to say guesses, and then we're going to pass in the index of guess count, which is going to start at zero, and we're going to assign that the guess value. Now each time through this loop, we want to increment guess count. That way we're not just writing to the same spot in the array. So you can do that two ways. The first way is you could say guess count plus plus like that. But another way you could do this, let me just space this out a little bit, is you could actually put the plus plus here and get rid of this statement altogether. And that should work exactly the same way. Basically it's going to access index zero and then it's going to increment the, the value of this variable. This is where the important concept of postfix versus prefix increments comes up. If you were to do plus plus guess count, that's not going to work the same way because that's going to increment first and then it's going to assign guess to index one instead of zero for the first time. So we wanna make sure we put those pluses at the end or do it in a separate statement if that's easier to read for you guys. The last thing is at the end of the game, we're going to output all of these values. So what I'm going to do is at the end, right after we do the while loop, we're going to just call a function to print the array. Uh, if I can type, there we go. And we're going to pass in guesses and guess count, which is going to basically be the count of elements. Remember when we're working with arrays, we have to pass that as a separate argument. So let's go up to the top and define this function. This is going to be void since this is going to print to the console. It's called print array, and it takes an integer array and an integer count. Then all we have to do is do a for loop to increment through all of the elements. And i equals zero. i is less than count. i plus plus. And then in here, all I'm going to do is output the array of i. So that's going to look like this. We're going to say array index i. And then I'll just do a tab character like so. All right, let's run it and give it a try. When we play the game, we got the value 25 to guess. Let's say we guess 20. Then we guess 30 maybe 27, hmm, 26, and then finally we guess 25, and look at that, it outputs all of these values. 
Now, at first when I saw this, I was like, why is it printing this zero? But I see that it's actually just the actual menu being displayed, zero for quit, one for play game. <laughs> so that tripped me up for a minute. So what we need to do is we just need to do an end line here like that, and that should fix the problem. Let's just make sure we got everything going good. We play the game, we guess 228, 230, and then 229. And you can see it outputs those values. So if you wanted, you could prefix this saying, hey, here is your sequence of guesses. It took you three tries, or whatever you want. Do something creative, try to make the game a little bit fun, make it very rewarding trying to get less guesses and do better. So that's all I got for you guys in this video. Hopefully that was helpful. In the next video, we're going to flip our discussion and start talking about vectors, which are honestly a lot better than arrays. So look forward to it, check it out. And if you've enjoyed this content, please be sure to subscribe. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next video.